Thank you for joining Jennifer Schaus and Associates in our 2019 webinar Wednesday series. We are coming to you live from downtown Washington, D.C. Our webinars are every Wednesday, and you can find the upcoming schedule on our website. Past webinars and all recordings are also on our website and on our YouTube channel, along with over 160 other recordings on federal contracting topics. All are complimentary. If you have questions for our speaker today, you can contact him directly with the contact information you'll see on the last slide. All right, this is just a little bit about us. We are a Washington, D.C. based firm and provide services for federal contractors. This ranges from market analysis reports to proposal writing and also post award compliance. More information is on our website, so please visit us there. All right, this is an upcoming event that you can find more information here or also on our website. And we do offer advertising, so you can contact this email if you'd like more information on that. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you, Pedro, for joining us. Um, he's going to be covering inside the source selection process price review. Uh, Pedro, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Hi, thank you so much. I'm excited to do this webinar. Um, yeah, so um, I'm going to be covering the inside the source selection process for the price proposal. Um, so how the government evaluates your price proposal. Next slide. Um, so a little bit about me is that I'm a former contracting officer um, and contract specialist in a core for the federal government. Um, I worked for, for about um, six different agencies acquiring um, goods and services. So I put together a lot of technical evaluation panels, um, evaluated a lot of proposals. Um, and so we're going to go through some of the things that um, I've done in the past in six different agencies. Um, they all follow the FAR 15.305A, um, which, which talks about the source selection um, process. So FAR 15 is how the government buys, but sometimes in conjunction, they will use FAR 15 with FAR Part 13, 12, and 16, um, and, also, and also 8. Um, so you'll see that, or they'll just take the language. So the language is pretty standard language when it comes. Um, so as you can see on the slide, it, um, it tells you specifically how, how the government's going to evaluate you um, when it comes to rating methods, combinations of methods, um, adjective, adjective ratings, numerical ways, um, and the level of strength that they're going to evaluate your proposal on. Next slide. All right, so there is a, a, the evaluation process does change um, when it comes to um, awards made under the Simplify Acquisition Threshold. And this is FAR Part 13. So FAR Part 13 says that the government can make um, an award that's estimated to be under $250,000. They can make it by gathering three quotes and, um, and evaluating the three quotes and making an award. Without, without a source selection panel. So um, there's not an in-depth evaluation panel. There's not an in-depth evaluation when, it, when there's an award that's going to be under $250,000. And they don't know, the only way they know it's going to be under $250,000 is because they already done an, an independent government estimate or they budgeted it for under $250,000. The proposals can come in at a higher rate, but they would still evaluate them at Either way, we still evaluate them the same. Um, the contractor officer makes um, the decision of who to, who to award it. Um, usually, they'll evaluate the proposals. Um, maybe a technical person will, but usually a contracting officer will make the, um, make the selection. So he will call people up and then ask the three quotes and then make a decision. Next slide. Yeah, so how do you know if it's under the staff? Uh, you will you you've probably receive a phone call from a contracting officer asking requesting a quote. Um, you can actually estimate the cost and it's it's, it's under two hundred fifty thousand. So let's say it's uh, for services and maybe it's, it's they're asking for two to three FTEs. Um, let's say they were asking for two FTEs for software development. Um, you can probably estimate that you know that FTE is going to cost government maybe anywhere from like a hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, so if they're asking for two, you're estimating anywhere from 250 to 300,000. But um, so usually you can you can kind of tell, hey, it's like this is going to simplify acquisition. And so um, they normally don't post them on GSA, eBuy, or um, FBO. This is normally they do it um, by just gathering three quotes and making a selection. 
Um, so it's supposed to say normally is normally not posted online. Um, it should be, but normally it is not. Um, next slide. So when it comes to big dollar values for anything over 250,000, there is a source selection process. And so I want to share what the government goes through when they're creating this process. So this is the internal process of what the government does. Uh, so the source selection process is developed during the creation of the requirement. And so what this means is that the contracting officer and the program office, um, they would choose what factors are important to them um, when it comes to evaluating your proposal. So anything from technical approach, management approach, key personnel, task performance, the price, executive team, et cetera. Um, normally what they want to choose, they want to choose about three to four evaluation factors. Um, you can find you can find the evaluations um, in section M. Um, so you'll see section M would normally have it. If they use the uniform um, contract format, it would be section M. If not, then it would be um, it would be listed somewhere else. But you can just do a control F and then find evaluation. Um, and this is how the government is evaluating you. Um, a technical evaluation panel will consist of the subject matter experts, uh, any technical writers they have, any end users, or the contracting staff. Normally, an evaluation panel, a contracting officer will always wants an odd number, so there will be an even number. Um, he'll want an odd number, anywhere from three to five evalu evaluators um, will be evaluating your proposal. And this is uh, very important. You don't want 10 people evaluating the proposals because then it's just it would be a lot, it would take a longer evaluation process because each evaluator has to evaluate each proposal and then they have all everybody will have to come into a consensus of the final evaluation rating. Um, and so the way it works is that the contracting officer will evaluate the proposals to make sure that the vendor has checked off all the boxes when it comes to maybe or anything related to the contracting. Um, to the proposal when it comes to like formatting, um, your font size, uh, making sure like you wrote your done number on the front page or your tax ID number on the front page, making sure you submitted all your um, um, past performance questionnaires. Um, so these things are a checklist that the contracting officer um, does first. And then if you miss something, you can disqualify your proposal. And then it doesn't get passed over to the technical evaluation panel. So it's very crucial. Um, what I tell my clients to do is that to go through the solicitation, highlight every single thing that's required of you to do within the proposal, such as font, page numbers, um, uh, any do additional documentations that need to be signed. Um, so those things you want to create a list, a checklist yourself, um, and then make sure you submit everything that's required because if not you're going to get back you're going to get thrown off you're going to get, um yeah your proposal is going to get um it's going to have a failing score so you won't get evaluated and so what happens is that the proposals that do get evaluated are handed over to the technical evaluation panel and the technical evaluation panel individually would will rate your proposal without discussing it with the team first they were individually rated uh once they have a rating they would then they would then, as a team, um, come up with a consensus evaluation for your um, proposal. And so for price, normally, um, I was, I'll was jump on that later, but um, so the government is encouraged to use additive scores, um, rather than numeric, numeric and college scores. So you'll see more additive scores now than in the past, um, just because GAO has uh, strongly recommended that that's the way they go due to high number of protests when it came to numeric and color scores. Um, next slide. So the types of evaluations that we have, um, we have trade-off, which is um, FAR 15.101-1, um, and this is known as best value. This is um, evaluating all factors um, in the solicitation. So, so solicitation shall state whether all evaluation factors are other than the cost and price when combined are significantly more important than approximately equal to or significantly less important than the cost and price. So best value, when you see a best value um, evaluation process, they're not looking at your price. Um, they're what well, they are, but they're not. And I'll explain that later. 
but the, what they're looking for is more like a complete package. Do they have the technical um, capability and is the price um, match that technical capability? Uh, next slide. And then the other evaluation strategy that they use, so there's two evaluation strategies. There's one is the best value and the other one is lowest price technically acceptable. And that you can also find in the FAR 15. Um, this is where, where price really matters um, when you're um, submitting a proposal. If it's LPTA, um, then you might want to uh, make sure you have a good technical proposal, but also make sure you have a um, uh, lowest price. Um, so it's basis, award, award is made of basis of lowest price um, when evaluating, um, but they have to be technically acceptable. There are no trade-offs. Uh, proposals are either evaluate, evaluated either go or no go. Um, and I'll show you what I mean later on the next slide. All right, so this is its LPTA evaluation process. This is just an example that I created, a scenario that I created. So proposals are evaluated based on price first, then technical. So for example, let's say I had, I received three proposals. I was a contracting officer, I received three proposals. One of them is 500,000, the other one's 600,000, the next one is 700,000. The way it works is that I might, the evaluation panel will evaluate the first proposal that was the lowest price. And they will give me a no go or go, and it's technically, and they will rate it either technically unacceptable or technically acceptable. In this scenario, they rated it technically unacceptable. So proposal one, even though it was the lowest, does not get the award. Um, then I would hand them the second proposal. So I don't give it to them all at once. I give them one by one. I would hand them the second proposal, and the second proposal is a hundred thousand dollars more, um, uh, which is that's fine, um, be, which is fine. It, it doesn't, I'll explain why it's fine later. But um, they, the team, the technical evaluation panel, evaluated them as technically acceptable. Um, and so this proposal two will win because it has the lowest price and was technically acceptable. Proposal three, because it was at 700,000, was not evaluated. Um, and that's not because it was 700,000, but it could have been 601. Six hundred thousand and one dollar and twenty-five cents, or six hundred thousand and twenty-five cents, let's say, um, because it was more. Um, just by law, it wasn't. It's not going to be evaluated because the government has already evaluated a proposal that's lowest price and technically acceptable. So, proposal two will win in this scenario. Next slide. Uh, so best value is pretty important when it comes to price. Um, best value is referred to competitive negotiated procurement in which government reserves the right to select the most advantageous offer to the government by evaluating and comparing factors in addition to cost or price. A, a best value procurement enables the government to purchase technical superiority even if it needs paying a premium price. A premium is the difference between the price of the lowest price proposal and the one which the government believes offers the best value. And I'll show you a scenario on, at the next slide. So, in order to make uh, an award for best value, there's a lot of documentation that goes on. So, lowest price technically acceptable. There's not a lot of as a contracting officer, I don't have to document it. I don't have to document the award decision um, compared to the best value process. Um, it's fairly easy when I do LPTA. Um, but when I don't, best best value takes a little bit longer. But at the same time, best value gets you. Um, kind of what the client wants um, when they're um, when they're reviewing several proposals. They they really want to make sure they're not missing anything. In the LPTA process, you know, they might not never get to your proposal, so uh, they'll miss out on stuff. So best value is very important. In order to make an award decision on the best value, uh, the the documentation by the evaluation panel. There's documentation by the contract specialist and the contracting officer. Um, it has to be consistent with the source selection procedures. And there's a document that internally that we use that says, hey, this is how we're going to evaluate this proposal. Uh, these are the factors. Uh, these are the team members that are going to evaluate it. Um, this is just um, internal information. Uh, the evaluation factors will be listed on the RFP and how the government is going to evaluate a proposal. Um, and that is what you pretty much need to know um, when it comes to um, what to submit to the government. 
and this this allows the government to um, justify how they're going to select a proposal, um, even if they have to pay a premium. Next slide. So the FAR regulation allows for this, uh, FAR 15.605, allows for the best value process. Um, it is found in solicitation section M, evaluation source um, factors for award. Um, next slide. So there are different types of evaluation processes in the best value. There are three methods that we use. Um, there are numerical, so we give a numerical score, an, ag an aggregate score, or a color. As I mentioned before, the GAO really encourages us to use aggregate scores um, when it comes to evaluating proposals. Um, and so a lot of government has moved away from color and numerical. Um, I would say that if you do see it come up, it's normally because somebody has been there for maybe 30 years and they just enjoy doing the numerical and color coding and they're the contracting officer signing off. So they get to do it the way they want to do it. Uh, but the government has moved to uh, an aggregate score and it's probably preferred. Um, I believe it's preferred for um, vendors um, just because it's, it's a lot cleaner and a lot clearer. Next slide. So when it comes to evaluating price um, on a price proposal, there are different methods. And so the price proposals are evaluated against the IBC which is an independent government cost estimate. So the government creates its own um, cost it, it, um, estimate of what this project would cost. And so they use different tools um, to come up with this. Normally they use historical data. So if they purchased this before, how much have they purchased it for, um, and what was the cost there. Um, they also do, they, they also evaluate the proposal to the allowed it funding, so what was budgeted for this project. Um, so let's say they only budget a million dollars and you, you submit a proposal for two million dollars. Well, because they only funded, they only budget for a million dollars, they can only award up to a million dollars and they're going to try to find a vendor that can do that for them. Um, it's not public information how much they're being funded by, how much the program office has for this project. Um, so it's just kind of those internal things that the government knows. Um, usually what happens, let's say all the proposals were $2 million, they would then um, uh, de-scope the project. So, the, you know, you'll always see the RFP go back out on the street because they're, they're, they have to de-scope the project and make it fall under the million dollars. Or um, they were asked for a discount. So sometimes you're here, hey, could you give us a bigger discount than what you normally will. It's normally because they're trying to get to that budget number. Um, it's really hard once a program office has a budget set, it's really hard for them to get more money um, depending on the depending on the agency. I worked at several different agencies. If it was DOD, uh, the program office needed more money, they just, you know, it was, a, it was an email, it was a quick email, and they got more funding. Um, I've been in some other agencies that are, um, are a lot smaller, and so if they needed more funding for their program, for their project, it was, um, they, they were out of luck. And so um, this is really important when it comes to understanding why the government has resolicited out or de the project. Um, price, uh, the price is evaluated in ranking of other proposals, so it is ranked. Um, so it will be ranked, they also will have the, um, the score, the technical, the technical evaluation score next to it, and then it will, as a as a whole, it will be evaluated for price feasibility. Next slide. So here's an example of what I'm referring to. Um, so let's say I receive three proposals: uh, Company A, Company B, and Company C. Um, the technical evaluation so for Company A, I go the technical evaluation panel give an excellent score, which is the highest you can receive. Uh, their their um, price proposal came out at 10 million. Company B was also excellent. Their proposal well, came out at 11 million. If it was just these two, I would give it to the lowest price, which is 10 million, um, you know, company A. Um, they have also got an excellent score. So overall, they're the best value. Um, but if you throw in something like Company C, which also had a good had a good evaluation, had a, a good rating, which is the second technical 
rating they can receive is the second highest, but they came at seven million. And then the government, the IDCE, which is the Independent Government Cost Estimate, and the, and the funding amount that they have is it's eight point five million dollars. They will award the company C. Um, and so, and the reason why is because their technical evaluation is so good, it's still considered um, good because you know you can see the the first score, the first excellent score, or the second, which is good. And they also came on the budget. Um, they came in about yeah, seven million dollars. They're under budget. They're under budget, and they're also under the IGCE, um, not by too much. Let's say they came in at, in at three million dollars. The government one would want to know why they came at three million, even though they had a good technical approach. The government will actually talk to them and be like, "Hey, uh, why are you coming in at three million? And sometimes I've seen this happen um, where a uh, company would say, "Hey, we have this new technology, and we're able to process things a lot faster than um, the other companies." And so, because of that, they're able to uh, remove a lot of labor hours. Um, so I've seen that happen, and so companies can go a lot lower because they figure out a way to be innovative. And the government loves to see that, by the way. So in this case, company C will be awarded the contract at $7 million based on overall price. Um, the cost savings outweighs the technical factor. It's, it's similar to the lowest price. And, and what I mean by that is that I can't justify – so if I, if I was a contracting officer and I had company A's proposal and company C proposal – I can't justify why I'm spending an additional $3 million for just a tiny, just a higher technical score. Um, there's no reason for, there's no way for me to justify that in paper because uh, I have to write as a document, hey, this is why we're spending the additional $3 million because we feel uh, this company is superior to the other proposals. But if it's not as superior, then there's no reason to, um, um, there's no reason to, um, to make that award. Next slide. So some of the strategies for winning on price. Uh, I always, I this is just a recommendation. Um, I tell my clients is uh, if you're trying to get into the agency, I would say bid within a break even approach. Uh, have a break even approach when it comes to a price proposal. Um, just because you know you want to get your foot on the door. Um, and once you understand the environment, the ecosystem and the environment there, then you can start bidding on things a little bit higher. Um, but if, if you're trying to break, if you're trying to get in the door, I would try to use a break even approach. Just, just my recommendation. Um, and then that way you're able to understand, hey, what are the pricing? Where are they, where are they bidding on? Um, and you can do some BD work within that agency. The other thing is um, understanding the government's IDCE. Um, it's really, I, I'm probably going to say this, um, but it's really not that hard to um, to come up with the IDC of the government. Um, usually, if you can find the previous contract dollar value, but, you know, if they had 10 employees in that um, in that con in that previous contract and the incumbent's contract, and let's say it was the contract was awarded for a million dollars and they had 10 employees, well, you can divide 10, you can buy 10 by a million, which would be 100,000 per person. Um, and so then you're able to get an hourly rate, and then you're able to understand, okay, this is their current hourly rate with their estimated they will cost. Uh, so you can either bid lower than that or bid higher, depending on how you feel about your technical approach. Um, so another thing is use historical data, um, a previous award amount. So look at FDS.gov and see what was awarded previously from this agency. Um, what type of um, contracts and what type of um, personnel was there and how much how we can identify the hourly rates on that. Um, so pricing is one of those things. It's not good. Pricing, pricing is not going to disqualify you, but it is, um, it, it's really important to have a, like a kind of common sense price proposal. It can't be outrageous. It can't be too low. It just has to be uh, right. Next slide. Uh, so after this entire process is done, um, finalizing the process with the CEO, the technical evaluation chair makes a recommendation for who to award the contract to. Uh, the contract specialist uses a recommendation to develop an award document, an award decision document, and the contracting officer takes the award decision and makes the final decision on who to award it to. So the contracting officer has the final say, 
the technical evaluation chair and the contract specialist make a recommendation on who to award it to. Usually, maybe I would say 90% of the time, uh, the technical, the contracting officer would take the technical evaluation chair's evaluate, um, recommendation. Uh, the CEO, the contracting officer might change it, might decide to award somebody else. And the only reason he would do that is because he feels he can't justify the price. He can't, he doesn't see, he sees some, um, something unethical being played. And so he would say, no, this isn't right. We need to do it this way. Um, and the reason why this is, this is really important. The contracting officer has an ethical obligation to the taxpayer to award on the contract, uh, to the best possible contractor. Um, and he signs off on this. So if anything ever goes wrong, if any, you know, if, any media breaks out or if, you know, the program office is trying to hire their friend, um, the contracting officer goes the blow on this. And so he's really cautious on making sure he awards it to the right person, um, to the person who really deserves it. And so that is, um, so the contracting officer is actually on your team when it comes to being fair. Um, and so is the contract specialist. Um, so the next one, and so once the contracting officer takes the award decision, makes the final decision, the program office is notified of who the vendor is selected, and then the vendor is selected. Next slide. Uh, final steps. Uh, so the final steps after the evaluation has gone through, the CEO notifies the, the vendor of award decisions. Uh, the documents are finalized uh, with the contracting officer. So the award decision document, the technical evaluation panel report, and the contract um, are finalized. Uh, then the program office schedules a kickoff meeting uh, with the awardee. Next slide. And so these are some STEM scoring systems that they use. You'll see this a lot on section M or on the solicitation. Next slide. And here's my contact information. Again, um, it's been a pleasure hosting you guys. Uh, my name is Pedro Rubio. Uh, you can find me at, you can email me at rubio at governmentblueprint.com. My phone number is listed. Uh, feel free to send me any questions regarding, um, regarding government contracting. Um, I've been around for a long time um, doing this, so it's been it's been fun. Um, I really enjoy it. And so I, really, I really like helping people out. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Rubio, or Pedro Rubio, for sharing um, your knowledge with us today. And this concludes the webinar. Thank you.